Today we're visiting with Upland Game Supervisor Jesse Kohler and we're going to talk about sharptail grouse, rough grouse and partridge for hunters this fall. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Jesse, explain to our viewers how you guys conduct your surveys for sharptail grouse. Yeah, well each spring we go out and we do what's called a block survey. So we survey an entire township, 36 sections, uh, 36 square miles of land that we go out and we try to count every male sharptail on those blocks. So we look for their, their traditional dancing grounds, their leks, and we locate those over and over and count how many males show up at those leks. And what did you guys find this year? And this spring, we were down across the state, so this is the second year in a row that we were down. Um, we climbed since 2018 after the 2017 drought. Our numbers reached a bottom in 2018. We had been climbing through 2020, and then after 2020, we've had two years in a row where we had slight declines. So. And what, what's the reason for that? The main thing I would blame from last year was just that we had very terrible drought in most of the state. And of course, it's poor, poor insect numbers. We saw during our brood surveys last summer that we had relatively low numbers of chicks. Um, that was confirmed with all the wings that hunters sent us from sharp-tail grouse. Should be a fairly unbiased sample, and most of the wings they sent in the average year would be would be uh, two two chicks or two juveniles for every adult. And last year we were closer to one juvenile for every adult. So, so we know there was low reproduction last year. Obviously with low reproduction and, and even if we had average winter survival, you're going to be de declining um, for year to year. Jesse, you guys are just finishing up your summer brood counts. Explain that. Yeah, after the, the spring surveys are really good to index the population density so we can figure out how many grouse there are per square mile, um, estimate that number in certain areas of the state. The spring numbers don't reflect what's what's going to be in the fall because it misses the reproduction component. So the main way that we survey how many chicks there are or juveniles per adult is by driving 20 to 40 mile routes. And we, we drive those routes um, across the state. We do them for pheasants, which are fixed 20 mile routes. And then we do random routes to pick up additional samples for grouse and partridge. And you found? So far this year, we're finding that our reproduction isn't terrible. The juvenile to adult ratio is okay, but the numbers overall are down again following our spring uh, patterns. So the numbers are a little bit down, puts us back to about where we were in 2019. Jesse, why are the brood numbers? Why do you suppose the brood numbers are down with all this grass on the landscape? Yeah, it's difficult to say. We look out here and it sure looks like it would be great for nesting cover. Um, however, we did go into the year, remember, in, in April yet, we hardly had any cover on the ground when we got socked statewide by those two blizzards. Um, following that, there were localized hail storms. I, I usually don't blame hail just because it's usually in smaller localities, um, but we did have a few hail storms and in general cool wet weather during the early part of our nesting season. So our early nesting conditions, even though it looks great now, probably weren't as ideal as what, as what we can remember. Jesse, one year ago, most of the state was in a severe drought. It's not the case right now. How's the habitat conditions looking now for sharp tail grouse? Yeah, so exactly. The whole state looks completely different than it did a year ago. Um, going into the winter, last winter, we didn't have any grass on the ground in most areas. It was really short and almost everything that could have been, been hayed had been hayed or grazed. Um, so this year we've got abundant grass. It's going to be a lot different. We're still going to be preaching the fire danger because now we have dry conditions going into the fall with more fuel. Um, but the good thing is for birds is that next year, this, this winter, we'll have better cover for birds in the winter and then in the next spring we'll have better residual cover. So in spring of 2023 we should have really good conditions for the early nesting season. Jesse, there are two areas of the state for sh sharp-tailed grouse hunters that they cannot hunt. Why is that? Exactly. There are two areas where we have prairie chickens in the state, greater prairie chickens, which used to be called uh, pinnated grouse. We were trying to maintain those populations of pinnated grouse and, and even myself it would be difficult to identify them flushing while you're hunting in the in the fall so we keep those areas closed to sharp tail hunting to prevent incidental harvest of greater prairie chickens and those areas can be seen in the proclamation there's one that's up near grand forks county and the other one is down around the cheyenne national grasslands jesse let's move to another grouse species up in the north 
northern part of the state, the Turtle Mountains, the rough grouse. Yeah, our rough grouse population is a smaller population in the state, obviously, with only two small blocks of habitat in the Pemina Hills and then in the Turtle Mountains. Uh, the population's always held at a, at a steady low. It cycles about every 10 years, and our last uh, peak in the cycle hasn't been for over 12 years, so they've, they've been struggling a little bit. Um, and this year we saw numbers rise in the Turtle Mountains and then in the Pemina Hills they were slightly down. Um, we only do a couple routes in the Pemina, Pemina Hills, so, so it's kind of difficult to say there. Um, but we'll, we'll see what hunters find. Usually our best reports are from hunting, hunting pressure in the fall and from hunters themselves. So. Let's move on to partridge. Last year, partridge kind of thrived during dry conditions. How are partridge numbers looking? Yeah, partridge have th thrived since 2017, really. We, we, all of our upland population seemed like they bottomed out in 2018. Other than partridge, they started climbing about that time and they continue, we're still seeing good numbers. Um, our reproduction surveys this summer were showing about the same as last year. Um, although that's good because we were at high numbers last year. So we're seeing large broods, eight to 10 chicks per brood. So that's a really good indicator that the population is gonna be good again this fall. And for partridge, it's pretty much your brood surveys that how you keep track of those. Yeah, they're not, they don't uh, lack as much as a pheasant or, or a grouse. They don't have territorial spots that they display on um, like a grouse and they don't crow like a pheasant. So they're hard to survey in the spring. Um, so our main way to survey partridge is through our reproduction surveys and seeing how many we see per mile. Let's talk, you mentioned a little bit ago about what, you know, the wings that hunters provide. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit, how important that is for your guys' management of these species. Yeah, the wings hunters provide um, help us with several things. First of all, we're getting dates when all these chicks hatch, so if we get a young young of the year bird, their wings, we can actually look at the feathers on their wings and backtrack to figure out the exact week when they would have hatched. Um, that's a really good useful tool for managers who want to know when they should be out haying or managing um, grass. So we know that most of our upland birds will have a peak hatch in the middle of June, but their hatch extends into August some years. So by having good information on what proportion of the birds hatch at different times a year, we can make better decisions about advising and managing managing our own lands on when the best times are for haying. So how can a hunter get one of these wing envelopes to help you guys? Um, wing envelopes can be requested online and then most hunters that have participated by sending wings in last year will get, will get uh, wing envelopes in the mail this year. So people can either request them or they'll get sent envelopes either if they got a survey last year and completed the survey or if they sent in wings last year. Um, hunter should be aware of farmers and landowners at this time of year when grouse season, partridge season and is going on to park in areas and just be mindful of, of uh, harvesting. We need to be careful where we park and, and also what we're leaving on the landscape. So if you're really self-conscious and keep in mind what you're leaving behind, I think most hunters will do a good job of not upsetting anybody. Jesse, overall, hunters should see birds this, this hunting season. Yep, since 2018, our populations are still higher than what they were at that low. So even, even in poor areas, and I say that we've gone down this year for sharp-tailed grouse, you still should be able to flush birds. During our spring surveys, we've noticed it a lot that we, we yeah, 2018, you were able to drive around and not see a grouse in some of our blocks. And this year, even as you're driving around, you see them flying, flying over or perched on fence posts. So I think the densities are, are back up to where hunters should expect to see birds. A lot of great information. Thank you, Jesse. Thanks.